Welcome back to the Catnip Podcast. My name is Grace, and today is Monday, December 3rd. This is a podcast about knitting and crafting and books and baking and cats, but most importantly knitting because that is what I love to do the most. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social medias, I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Ravelry. I'm most active on Instagram, and the month of December I am posting pictures of my Advent minis which is very fun and I will talk about that more in the episode. But if you want to see what those Advent minis look like, you should go and follow me on Instagram for sure. Um, In addition to that, if you are interested in any of the things that I will be talking about in this episode, um, they're on my show notes. They're in my show notes. Uh, The show notes are on my blog. If you are on YouTube, the link to my blog will be down below in the down bar. Um, Also, I work at a yarn store. It is the Modern Skein in Montgomery, Texas. I will include all the information, website, online store, social media, all that jazz in the show notes. So if you want to go check us out, that would be wonderful. Or if you want to come say hi, spend some time with us, hang out, knit, we would love to see you. Again, we have a lot of Christmas gifting knitting stuff so it's not a lot but it is a lot it's just not super exciting Um, but I do have a fun finished object to show you so that is very exciting other than that it's pretty quiet it's pretty normal very low-key today Um, it's cold today so that's why I have my Veronica on by Shanna Cook I love it it is amazing Um, so with that I will grab my tea and if you would like to go grab something tasty to drink or snack upon, or an animal to pet, or knitwear to snuggle up in, or anything like that, you can come back and join me for some crafty chat. So, I don't think there's really anything to discuss a whole lot. Um, Beforehand, normally I have things to ramble on about before we actually get in started with the knitting content, but I can't really think of anything that's like pressing needing to be shared. So let's just go ahead and get started with the knitting, shall we? Because this is a knitting podcast, don't you know? So I have a finished object, which is very exciting, and I will share that with you now. Um, Last week, a hat was brought in by one of the regular ladies at the Modern Skein, and it became very popular, and then we all decided that we needed one. So I happen to have some of this yarn in my stash. It is Malabrigo Rasta, which if you are unfamiliar with it, it's super bulky. The pattern is knit on with size 15 needles. It's insane. Um, The pattern is called Into the Woods, and I actually don't remember the designer name, but it will be in the show notes, so if you're interested in that, do go check it out. It's perfect for a Christmas gift. It goes super quickly. Um, Myself and another one of the regular ladies who comes to the yarn store, Jan, she finished hers um, in a day. (laughs) like literally half a day. (laughs) Um, So that's very exciting. If you are looking for a very, very quick knit, this is the one for you. Christmas Eve, you have no idea what to give someone and they need a knitted object, go find some super bulky yarn and knit yourself a hat. So it's super cool. Um, The pattern actually shows up much better on camera than it does in person. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just my eyes. I don't know. But it's twisted ribbing at the bottom. We have the untwisted stuff, uh, untwisted stitches here, and then we have the twisted stitches kind of creating this, um, what am I doing? I'm doing it backwards, like a, a mountain tree, if you will, pattern. I would try it on, but seeing my hair is in a bun, I don't think that would work very well. But it is very cute. It has not been blocked. The ends have not been woven in. Um, I also have this much left over in one skein. It requires one skein, which again makes it just the perfect gift. Gift. Gift what? (laughs) Um, Gifting gift? I don't know. You know what I mean though, hopefully. (laughs) Um, So it's super great. I obviously, I have a lot left. but it would depend on how like loosely or tightly you knit or whatever. But this is how much I have left. I would like to make a pom-pom so I could use up the rest of it. That would be really amazing. Um, I think that would be super great. So it's just a matter of actually making the pom-pom and doing it and blocking it and blah, 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 blah. 
do that in my free time that I do not have. <laughs> um, I'm not complaining though. I do, I do have a little bit of free time. But that belongs to other knitting items that I want to knit like advent calendars, which we'll get into, like I said, in just a moment. Um, so yeah, this is a super great hat pattern. I would highly recommend it if you, again, if you were looking for so quick knit, like I'm not even joking, not exaggerating. If you have um, never knit a hat and you're looking for a good beginning hat, this, and if you understand twisted stitches, this might be a good hat pattern for you, um, but you do need to understand the difference between twisted stitches and untwisted stitches and how to do them. Make sure you follow the pattern because if you don't, then you kind of lose this. Um, I don't know what that is. Are they trees? I mean, I know that the pattern name is Into the Woods, but I don't know. So it's super quick and easy would highly recommend size 15 needles super bulky yarn malabrigo rasta we um side note we do have a lot of malabrigo rasta at the modern skein so if you're interested in checking out the website or whatever or if you'd like to come in um we do have some colors we do not have this color this was part of my stash um i've had this for years upon years and now it's finally been used so yay <laughs> Yay for stash busting. Um, I've also, speaking of stash, very quickly, well, I'm done talking about this though, so cool story about the hat. Um, I don't know if it, I think this happens. Well, I've experienced this a lot recently. Birdie? <laughs> Birdie has started meowing. Sometimes he does this when he's lonely and he, I think he's like, where did you go? But I don't know. And anyway, I mean, he knows I'm here, so. But it's a cat, so. Yes. Um, anyway, side note, sorry to get distracted. Um, this year, I feel like I have done so many test knits that have been amazing. But this always happens. When I have deadlines, when I have things that need to get done, I want to cast on literally everything. I want to knit, be knitting anything else but the the required knitting or Christmas gifts or test knits or whatever. And that has nothing to do... Hi! Are you lonely? Hi! I'm sorry. He's just... He's just having a day, I guess. He's just wandering around. Um... <laughs> again, apologies to get distracted. Um... What was I saying? Oh, there's no, it's not a problem with the pattern. It was not a problem with the test knitting. It was not a problem with like not liking the pattern or not liking what I was going to be making. I am not unhappy with making gifts for people because I don't really knit for other people any other time of the year unless it's like a commission knit, which again doesn't happen very often. Hi, you keep distracting me. Are you okay? Hello! He's like, I need attention. Please pay attention to me. Um, I am so happy to make these Christmas gifts. I am very excited to do this. It's such a great stash busting uh, situation. Um, so that's really good. But it it's taken away all my time to knit things for me or things that I want to knit, which is incredibly selfish, and I do realize that, which is why it's called selfish knitting. Ta-da! Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that because I like knitting for myself. Um, and then I use Christmas as a time to knit for other people who are knitworthy, and that's great. But the rest of the year belongs to me. <laughs> Um, so I actually literally, right before I started recording, literally right before I started recording, I was like setting up my stuff, got my, my camera ready, was getting ready to press record, and then I noticed that I had some stash on my desk that I want to put together to make just a simple 
in the round cowl because again in my free time which I have so much of this is what I want to be knitting so this is um, old old stash which again like stash busting it's okay everybody you know it's fine this is Madeline Tosh DK in the antique lace colorway um, I actually used this same color in my reindeer hat for the reindeers. Um, the reindeer hat that I knit was by um, Meg of Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits, her podcast, and she has a yarn dyeing company as well. Um, I knit that, I tested knit that for her a couple weeks ago, I think. Um, so I actually had two skeins of this, and this was the other one that I pulled down because I was just looking at my colors and then this is leftover mohair from my uh Stephen West texture time mystery knit along and it is a uh, suburban citron mohair in the oh I don't remember the name of it I'm sorry but it's very pretty and I think the two together will be so gorgeous and I think just like a plain simple cowl maybe would be really good. I don't know. It's not like I don't have other things to knit upon because I definitely do. Um, but I really like this idea. I think this is stunning. And I know it's not really showing up on camera back here, which is where the nor normally the lighting really works. That's a little better. I don't know. I just think it would be really pretty and it would be a good use of my stash and I know that I would love it. So. Maybe I should. Size 8, size 9s. Uh, I think that would be a good idea. Maybe. Maybe it would make me feel good. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, this was just like very spur of the moment. Oh, that looks pretty. I really want to do that now. And I don't know if that's just because I have so many things that need to get done knitting wise, so many requirements and just other life things that are pressing and so I'm like, I'm trying to cope with that by wanting to cast on all the regular non Christmassy things for myself or knit upon things for myself that are on the back burner right now. Does that make sense? I don't know. I just, I don't know. There's just so much stuff to knit and there's not enough time in the day. People, there's just really not enough time in the day. I have like seriously thought about, and it's really not that bad. I feel like I'm just very, very much over exaggerating this in my head. So I do apologize if, if I'm coming across as over exaggerating this. Um, but I have seriously thought about like, if <laughs> we're going grocery shopping tonight, right? As you do, because that's what people do. You need to go grocery shopping. Um, Sam is coming with me. Sam is my husband, if you are new to the podcast. He's coming with me this evening, which is very wonderful. And um, I've thought about knitting while grocery shopping because I have so many things to get done. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing or what. <laughs> So just me trying to fit in knitting wherever I can is now part of what I'm doing. Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm just trying to fit in knitting however I can so I can get it done as quickly as possible so I can knit other things. And again, I'm not complaining, though it may sound like I am. <laughs> and you're like, no, you're really complaining. Um... No, I like, I, I really do enjoy knitting for other people and I really enjoy giving people knitted items. I think that is so much fun. I get so much joy out of doing that. It's just the process <laughs> of not getting to knit for myself. And um, actually someone at the yarn store did point this out. Um, the same lady who finished the hat, the chunky hat, Jan. Um, so hello Jan if you're watching. Um, she pointed out that if I, uh, measure out my time, so if I figure out to knit on something a certain amount of time, knit on that a certain amount of time, get those done, move forward, and then I can schedule in time for myself, my knitting self, I should say. Me time. 
me knitting time. Um, and I think that would probably be a healthy thing to do. But that does also require time to figure out the scheduling. <laughs> um, so, yes, it's just a matter of figuring things out. And then there's also things like Christmas present buying and getting ready for the holidays and figuring out when we're going to make Christmas cookies and traveling and... It's just a busy time of year, everyone. It's not a bad thing. It's just really busy. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. Christmas time is one of my favorite times of year, for sure. Just, I think once you get to the end of October, beginning of November, it's like, ah, the holidays are coming. I'm so excited. I'm usually listening to Christmas music by then, so it's like super joyful. I'm very happy. Um, then you have Thanksgiving and that's super fun. So it's kind of like a ramping up to the celebration of Christmas and that's really exciting or just any kind of holiday. If you don't celebrate Christmas, just general hot holidays and, and happiness and spending time with your friends and family and eating good food and all that jazz. So I just really enjoy the holiday season. I think it's a lot of fun. I may complain, but I really do love it. So <laughs> there was my rant. I knew I had one in there. Because <laughs> um, normally I rant at the beginning, and then I usually rant in the middle, but I guess that was just the only one rant today. I say that. I have no idea what's coming, so who knows. <laughs> so... Speaking of Christmas gifts, we'll just go ahead and show those Christmas gifts right now. I don't remember what I showed you at this point because I'm making a lot of the same thing and just different versions of it. So I don't remember if I've shown you this, but this is my third out of my five. No, that's not right. I have more than that. Third, this is my third out of like my seventh, seven, seven, six. I should know that, but I don't remember. In this time, in this moment, I have completely forgotten, but I had known this for a fact for forever since I planned it out. Anyway, this is my third out of, out of however many on net shawls I will be making. This is not, this should be this way. Very easy, garter stitch shawl, big needles, fingering weight. I'm using Knit Picks palette. Um, I'm using two skeins per color um, just because of the yardage. So if you do have one skein of fancy fingering weight that you have no idea what to do with and you really want to fasten it, I would highly recommend this because it is so easy, so mindless. I've gotten so much reading done, which is another thing I'm going to talk about later. Not right now. Um, so it's just very easy. You have make ones down the center. I have changed the increase on the side to be a knit one yarn over instead of a knit one make one. That is just my personal preference. Both work. Just as long as you're increasing. Get your four increases in. Do it however you like. I just prefer that on the edges of shawls because it makes it more stretchy. Fun fact. Um, and then on the end, on the edges, at the bottom, there will be um, three rows of eyelets. It is a free pattern. I would highly recommend it. Please go check it out. It will be in the show notes. This one that I'm currently working on is in the Roibus. 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 That T that I don't know how to pronounce. R-O-O-I-B-O-S. So... I have two skeins of this. I am on my second. I am in the downward slope of this particular one, which is really great because I need to make progress with these. <laughs> these are the bigger item out of the many items that I'm making. The first ball of yarn really goes like super, super fast. I'm done with the lickety split. I don't know why that is. It's probably because the rows are so short. But then when I start the second ball, it just really drags on. And it happened with the very first one that I made. It happened with the, the first two of the Christmas round that I've made. It's happening with this one. 
I don't know why that is. Because I'm like really excited. Or not, I'm not excited, but I'm just like getting these rows done. Do, do, do. Flying by. And then once I hit that second ball, it's like wah, wah. Don't want to work on that anymore, which is usually then when I start one of the hats that I'm working on, which I will now show you. Nice transition right there. Um, also, very quickly, I'm using my two Christmas Jessaloo, Stitch by Jessaloo bags. I'm loving them. It's putting me in the Christ Christmassy mood. It's also just very happy because they're Christmassy. So, these have little elves and reindeer, and I just love it. So this is the one. So when I get tired of working on this, I go into my Ratuli hat, which is living in another Stitch by Jessaloo Christmas bag, which I also love and adore. How can we, like, say no to this print? Or any Christmas print, for that matter. Um, this is another hat edition. I don't think I... I think I'd probably started this one last week. It's now done. <laughs> Finished it pretty quickly. So that's really good. I am um, now doing my third one out of, I do know I have five of these to make. This is my third one out of my five, so I am so close to being done with these! Yay! So exciting, and I have made very good progress with this, so I should be nearing the crown decreases. I knit most of this the past two days. Yes. I think I knit like from here, whoa, using my bag of yarn. I knit from here to here, probably around here on Saturday at work after I finished my hat. And then from here to here yesterday and last night because we definitely binge watch Homecoming, which is on Amazon Prime, which is another discussion that we will have in just a moment. But, so this is a Ratuli hat pattern. R U I T I'm now. I don't know. I know how to spell it. I really do. Ratuli. Do I even have it written out? R A I T U L I. Ratuli hat. It is a free pattern. I have done all my math and figured out my hat down to a science at this point, and I pretty much have it memorized, which is really great considering I have two more of these to make. So. This, again, will be for a family member or a friend. You won't know. I don't know. I do know, but I just don't want to give away any hints or clues to family members or friends that might be watching. So, this is another hat. We're making really good progress. So, yes. We're getting there, we're getting there. So yeah, every time I get really tired of working on the Onet shawl, if the rows just get too long, I'll either work on a current one of these or I'll just cast one on because, like I said, I have five of these to make. So, <laughs> um, the, I had, I did have to like get more of this. This is the Hollyberry colorway. Um, and I had a lot of this, but I just ended up running out of it because I had knit two other hats with it. But thankfully I had thought of that before I ran out, so I did get more. But this other gray that I'm using is from my stash. So, and I'm pretty sure this is like the silver heather or something like that. Finley heather, excuse me. Finley heather. So. Again, it picks palette. Works mighty fine, mighty fine, everyone. So, good stash busting, making things work. It'll be good. Oh my goodness, there's so much to do. It's making me sleepy. Goodness gracious. So yeah, that is my, what my Christmas stuff is hap or like involving right now. I like that I have both my Christmas bags being used so I know what's in them. Um, so it's just very easy to throw them into my work bag and head to work. <laughs> that's all I should be knitting on right now um, I did work on my black and gray sparkly shawl a little bit sometime last week because let's have a little conversation again um, 
much, how, how do we start this? My vertices unite situation, my dilemma, what do I do? I do appreciate everyone's comments. I loved everyone's opinions. It was really fun seeing how everyone would deal with that. And I think what I'm going to do, someone suggested to lay out my yarn so I can see it and be motivated to like work towards that, which I love. So I do have that. It's sitting on top of my Christmas yarn bag. So like I have to touch it and I have to see it in order to get more yarn for my Christmas items. So that's very inspirational because I'm like, ah, those colors, so pretty. Um, so that is one thing. So I do appreciate that word of advice. Um, another thing someone suggested doing a Christmas Eve cast on which is really wonderful. I might do that. I don't know. I just, I don't know. <laughs> There's just so many options. Um, I think definitely I need to get this black and gray shawl done. Like there's no question about it because I want to use those needles for sure. Oh, you know what? Oh, <gasps> I just came up with an idea, everyone. I could potentially not put the pressure to finish the black and gray shawl first and cast on with a regular pair of sixes or whatever it is. A regular pair, not nothing special, maybe wooden, whatever I have available, pretty much. Um, because I would prefer to use metal, per uh, preferably chai goose, which I am, in fact, Asking for the interchangeable set for Christmas, everyone, I did decide. Chow goos, chai goos, however you would like to pronounce it. That is what I'm going to be asking for as a big gift. So, if I do get them on Christmas Day, I could then switch the Vertices Unite over to my new pair of chow goos, chai goos, whatever. <laughs> Um, and that would work pretty well. So I am just now thinking of that. We had a little eureka moment. Um, so that's nice. That's less pressure to get the other shawl done. Oh, but it would, be feel, it would feel so good to get that done. I don't know. But then there's also my uh, the cowl that my mom and I are doing. The Snowberry by Shannon Cook with the bobbles and the lace and stuff. I did get a little bit of progress on that done. It was great. I did that on Wednesday last week. I read and I worked on Snowberry and Christmas presents. It was great. And I watched The Great British Bake Off, which is another conversation. Oh my goodness, we have so many other conversations to have. I hope you're keeping a list because I've probably forgotten at this point. <laughs> um, so yeah, that like that needs to be done. And I really want to do, like I want to get that done. And then there's other things that it like keep popping up and I want to get things done kind of so when like if I get yarn for Christmas then I won't feel bad about casting it on and then there's the sweater that my mom and I are going to make for our Christmas Day cast on and we can make that our Christmas. I could have two Christmas Eve cast ons. You know what? Who cares? You won't judge me, I hope. Please don't touch me. If I do have two Christmas Eve casts on, cast, casted ons, cast ons, cast ons. I don't know why I thought casted ons was the correct form of that, but you know what I mean. Um, so I don't know. Or I could just be like, who cares? And cast it on tomorrow. I could, but <laughs> probably won't. <laughs> um, so yes, there's just a lot of different variables that are out there, things that need to be figured out. I don't know what is going to happen, but I have lots of ideas bouncing around in my head. We'll see. I feel like this requires some discussion with my mom about our sweater situation. Hmm... I don't know. Also, fun fact. Actually, this is not, I mean, it's a fun fact, but it's also a very big fun fact. So, 
Um, the having to do with the modern skein, where I work, is starting in January, January 1st, we will be having a sweater knit along, and I believe it goes until April? March or April, I don't remember, and I'm, I'm getting a random phone call from someone I don't know. I'm podcasting, please leave me alone. Oh, I'm sorry, I just shook the camera. Um, so, we'll be having a big sweater knit along. The only requirement is that it be for an adult, or you, or just some big person. So no baby sweaters, unfortunately, because they would go very quickly. Um, so an adult sweater, and you must have at least one skein that is bought from the modern skein. Um, whether that be online or in person. So, if you want to knit a sweater, if you've been wanting to learn how to knit a sweater, we will be having classes. Those dates, I don't think, I don't remember what they are off the top of my head, but they will be decided if they have not been decided already. Um, that will be on the website, on social media, in the newsletter, once that gets all figured out. I will be teaching those classes, so that is very exciting. I've never knit a sweater before and really just want some help. There will be three different sessions, so, and they'll, I think some of them will be different times than others. That didn't make sense. Length of times, I should say. Like, one, one of them will be one hour and the other two will be two hours or something like that. I'm not sure. This is an example, so don't take, don't take this as, like, the hard, hard truth. Whatever. I say the word whatever a lot. I do apologize. <laughs> um, so that is very exciting. If you were interested in that, you should definitely go check out the Modern Skeins newsletter um, or the website. I think the information is on the website as well. So if you are, even if you do not live in Texas, if you get a, yarn, a skein of yarn from the online store or whatever, you will be eligible and you can send us a picture or you can tag us or whatever on Instagram or on Facebook. Um, when you finish and you will be entered to win something that I don't remember what the prize is and I do apologize I feel like I'm not very prepared with the information for this knit along <laughs> but <laughs> all the information will be on the website in the newsletter all that jazz so you should join in if you've been wanting to knit a sweater for yourself or another human being that is an adult a big sweater, not a baby sweater, <laughs> um, then you should join in because that'd be super fun. I'm, I will be knitting lots of sweaters in 2019 just because I want to, because I love to knit sweaters. Um, I have sweaters in mind. I have sweater yarn for sweaters already. I have sweater plans that I really just want to go forth with but I can't because there's other things that I mean need to be knit and yes so join in the sweater fun please do we would love to see you the sweaters that you make again the requirements are that it's for an adult and that you use at least one skein from the yarn store a modern skein whether that be purchased online or in store so only requirements go find out more information on the website in the newsletter and on social media so very exciting so very quickly let's just discuss those other conversations that were needed to be had that were mentioned in the knitting portion of the episode <laughs> um, first of all books I have been reading the third book Jane Seymour. Um, I forget what the whole title is, but it's about Jane Seymour. It's by Allison Weir. Um, if you are new to the podcast, I have been slowly making my way through her series of Henry VIII's Wives. I love, love, can't like emphasize that enough. I love historical fiction. I love reading about this kind of stuff. It is truly fascinating to me. Not all time eras are fascinating to me, but a lot of them are. Um, specifically the Tudor area, er, area, era, what? The time period, you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, I uh, read her first one about Catherine of Aragon, I read about Anne Boleyn, now I'm almost done with Jane Seymour, and then I will make my way through the rest of the wives that I don't remember their names or the orders that they are in. I know there's a Jane Grey at some point. 
and then Catherine Parr. It might be the last one, but I feel like there's another one in there. I don't remember. I should know this. Why don't I know this? <laughs> I will learn about it because I know she's got her books about it, or Allison Weir has books about it, so I'm very excited. I really love her writing style. I think it's very well researched and just very well explained. If you are a if you were interested in history, I think you would um, appreciate these books if you like historical fiction because I feel like Alison Weir does a good job of writing unbiasedly about each queen. Does that make sense? So like in the Catherine of Aragon book, I felt for Catherine of Aragon. In Anne Boleyn's book, I felt for Anne Boleyn. In Jane Seymour's book, I was like, whoa, I had no idea that you were, like, this type of a person. I feel for you. This is rough. Um, and I'm sure I'll feel the same way about the rest of the, the books in the series. It's just such a really cool way to learn about history. I really love it. I really, really do love it. I know historical fiction is not for everyone. But it is definitely for me... It's one of my favorite genres to read. Um, I learned, I did not know very much about Jane Seymour. I know very little, and I'm not quite done with the book yet. So that is, I'm still learning about Jane Seymour, but I really didn't know anything about her. Now I feel like I know a lot about who she was and what she did and who she was before she married Henry VIII and how she went through being a lady in waiting for both Catherine of Aragon and Anne Boleyn and how that was a big problem and all that jazz. So I really like Alison Weir's books. She's got other books in like different that are not part of the Henry the Eighth Eighth's wives. Um, and I've read a couple of them. I don't remember what they were about, but they were really good. I do remember that. <laughs> Um, and I hope to read more in the future. So that is very exciting. If you're into historical fiction, definitely go check out her books. In the movie front or TV show front, if you have Amazon Prime um, and you have not seen the TV show Homecoming, it is very good. It is very intense and there is quite a bit of language. So if you do have a problem with that, maybe not a good idea. But it's so so complicated and such a mind bender. It's like, what is going on? I have no idea. I have literally no idea. And even at the end, you're still just kind of like, what did I just watch? <laughs> so it's on Amazon Prime. It's got Julia Roberts in it. It's her first TV show. I think she did an amazing job. Um, she, uh, is the main character. I think I said that. There's 10 episodes. Each episode is around 25-30 minutes, so it's very easy to go through them quickly. We, <laughs> Sam and I watched the entire series yesterday, split up into two parts. So we watched about five episodes in the afternoon after we got home from church. We went to a Christmas party that was super fun that our church was having, and it was so amazing. And then we came home, watched one episode, and couldn't stop until we finished. So we went to bed at around one <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> um, so was that the wisest idea? I don't know, but it was so good. It's one of those things where like, when the, when the first like credit thing pops up, you're like, oh no, I have to keep on watching. Like I, I need to know what happens. But, and also at the same time, you're like, oh, these episodes are only like 25 minutes. It's okay. But those 25 minutes will stack up on each other if you got five more episodes to watch. Um, it's just so good. So good. Again, it's very intense. Um, very, there's a lot of language in it. But, it's... It's, it's just very fascinating. It's such a good story. I don't really know how to explain it, and I do apologize. So I will include, like, the IMDB article or, like, the Wikipedia article or whatever about it so you can read about it, um, and then you can make your decision off of that. But it is truly fascinating. So good. So good. 
on a less intense note, also in the TV show realm, if you have a Netflix subscription, everyone, dear everyone, we have been given a huge gift because Netflix has given us the most recent finished Great British Bake Off, like, season. We have it to watch. We didn't have to wait five years or ten years or however long <laughs> we have to wait. <laughs> um, so I've been watching that. Oh my goodness, I cannot express to you how much joy and happiness that show brings me. It, like, I don't, I really just, so good. <laughs> Um, if you enjoy baking shows and you watch like the like the Food Network in America, if you're from America and you watch like baking shows and cooking shows and you enjoy those, like the Great British Bake Off is just so much better in my opinion. <laughs> this is my opinion. So you're allowed to have your opinion. But this is my opinion that the Great British Bake Off is like top tier Nothing can beat it in regards to baking shows, except I saw they came out with a Christmas one, like a holiday season Great British Bake Off, and I'm like, mm, it's just so happy. <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, but that might be in my future this afternoon. So, I don't know, just the, the competitors, I can really go in, this is something I can go off on, but, like, the competitors in the Great British Bake Off are just so happy, they're so kind to each other, like, they're genuinely happy for each other when they, the other person gets a good, like, a good review, or they get a, a handshake from Paul Hollywood, or they're, or they're sad when, like, their cakes fall over, or they're sad when, like, their, their cookies get burnt. <laughs> Which I know it's just like, want well, their cookies got burnt. Who cares? But it's the Great British Bake Off. They're in the special tent. They're like being judged by Prue and Paul Hollywood, and it's just it's so cool. I love it. It's just so awesome to see how like the the whole group of people competing walk in together. They are still competitors, but they still like love each other. And I think that's awesome, and it's so cool to watch that. It's just, it makes me so happy. Also, when you're watching a baking show, I don't think you can go wrong with, like, just watching beautiful, insane, like, baking creations be made. Whatever they may be. Like, they create some of the most amazing stuff on that show. Um... Yes, so I just, I, I, again, I can go off on this all day, but if you've never seen it and you do have Netflix, go watch it. the first episode, go watch it, like, just give it a try. If you don't like it, that's okay, but at least say that you tried it, because I don't know how it can not make you happy. I always laugh, I always smile, sometimes people get emotional about winning and losing and like leaving and sometimes they'll show like the the star baker calling their family and like they get really emotional and they start crying and then it makes me cry and it's like whoa this is just so emotional, this is just so amazing, this is baking, I love it. Plus everyone has fun accents and they're from all over the place and it's just a very diverse group of people, and it's so cool to see them all work together in their own way. But still be competitors, but still love each other. So, I'm repeating myself at this point. Please go watch it. It's so good. It's just so good! It's the best! Besides Hallmark Christmas movies, it's one of the best things in it, too. Please, just, please just go watch it. Please. <laughs> so now I have ranted and rave, raved for a long time about the Great British Bake Off and historical fiction. Um, <laughs> it's time to bring this podcast to an end. Um, that is all that I have for you guys this week. I hope to... Oh, wait. No! Hold on. That's not true. I can't believe I forgot about this. This is going to be out of order because I totally forgot to mention this in the knitting section. I am so dumb. I am so sorry. So... Dear everyone, I even talked about this beforehand and I still forgot. 
I'm doing a, a knitting advent calendar, a yarn advent calendar. You open a mini every day in the month of December. Sometimes there are ones that are 12 days, sometimes there's ones that are 24 days, sometimes there's one that are 23 days of minis and then one big skein on the 24th. That is the option that my mom and I are doing. We are doing at the Suburban Stitchers Advent Calendar. We are so excited, everyone. It's so much fun. Who can say no to opening a little packet of yarn, like like literally that big, it's in, in a little envelope, every day? It's just so nice. I think this is definitely scratching my itch of like knitting non-Christmas items. So, uh, we are... We, my mom and I are doing this together, and we're doing the advent calendar with everyone else doing advent calendars. Um, so we are doing the Amba O'Brien's Advent Adventurer Cowl that came out on Friday, I believe. So it's a really, really fun pattern. It's like an infinity cowl. It's got lace, kind of lace. It's very easy. It's definitely not a mindless knit though. It's definitely more involved than I thought it was going to be, which is not a bad thing, but it is something to take into consideration. I would also knit this pattern again though. I think it's a really great stash buster and especially with like fading options nowadays and just fun things to do with that, I think it would be beautiful. So, <clears throat> dear everyone, if you have the Suburban Stitcher advent calendar and you have not opened days one or two or three um please don't watch because I don't want to spoil it for you because that would be really sad and I would not be one to be spoiled so please look away please look away unless you don't mind being spoiled in which case you can watch to your heart's content <laughs> but here's my progress of the advent calendar so far so we open up our mini, we wind it up, and then we knit however many rows per day. And this is what we have so far. Obviously it's not very much because it's only the 3rd of December. I have not even wound up my, my third mini, but I do have it. I did open it. Um, so the Suburban Stitcher um, yarn minis are inspired by Christmas movies. Um, I think I mentioned that last week. The first one is How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and it is this one, which is absolutely stunning. I love it. So pretty. The second one uh, was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which is actually still attached to my work in progress. I hand wound this ball. So it's also very fun. So today's mini is very interesting. It is a, a Christmas movie that I've actually never seen. I do apologize for those of you who do love this movie. I have never seen it, um, which makes me want to see it because I don't know where this color is inspired from. I don't think it's like, I don't, I, don't, I just don't know because I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> but I should watch the movie because I know it's like classic and I really need to. So, Here's the mini for number three, for day number three, December 3rd, today. How many times can I say that? Um, and here it is. So it is a very golden yellow uh, with like speckles of brown, orangey color, some green in there. Very pretty. So I, we will be fading it into this which I think is very fun. It's very poppy. We'll see how it is tied in with the rest of the colors. Um, I think it'll be super fun. I really like that it's just kind of like what you open, you don't know what you're gonna open and together it'll all make something really pretty. And I think that's really great because then I don't have to worry about picking out colors, <laughs> which can be stressful sometimes. Um, so yeah, this is, oh, did I even say what this movie was called? Christmas in Connecticut. <laughs> I do apologize. This is the Christmas, inspired by Christmas in Connecticut. Um, so if you understand why this is yellow, why this is a bright golden yellow, it's a beautiful, like, Christmassy, like, golden star color, but I just don't understand what the... Um, connection is. So maybe you know. Do you know? What are your thoughts? 
So, I really like it. This is also on my to-do list later today, is wind that up and knit that up. Probably while this is importing slash exporting and I'm watching the holiday version of the Great British Bake Off. So, I have fun things planned for this afternoon. I can't believe that I forgot that. That was like the main thing to talk about today. Man, it's really not on my game today. Probably because we stayed up till one watching Homecoming last night. <laughs> um, but I did tell you guys, so that's all that, really, all that really matters. On that note, that is all that I have for you guys this week. Um, if you are, uh, what am I saying? If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for checking this podcast out. If you watch the whole thing, I do hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you subscribe and come back and um, just join the knitting podcasting community. I really appreciate you checking this out. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you, your comments, every time you come back and watch and you like and all that jazz. That is wonderful. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social medias and continue to watch my advent progress throughout the week, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Ravelry. I'll be posting my advent stuff on Instagram. So please go, please go check that out. Um, if you would like to see any of the stuff that I've talked about or things that I want to share with you, um, please check out my show notes. All the links will be there. If you're on YouTube, the link to my blog will be down below. Or if you're on my blog, everything will be down below already. I hope you had a wonderful weekend, and I hope you continue to have a wonderful week. If you have crafty plans, I hope that they are successful. If you are cr uh, Christmas crafting, more power to you. I hope things go well. I hope that you are not crafting on Christmas Eve. Um, I hope just manage your time well and you will get it done. I, I'm sure of that. If you are Christmas shopping, I hope that that goes well for you as well. May there be lots of sales. That would be great. Shipping would be, go smoothly. I hope that you have enough wrapping paper. <laughs> we got some new wrapping paper. I'm very excited about it. It's very cute. One of them has cats. Um, that is very exciting. Like I have expressed this whole episode, my Christmas knitting is pretty much what I will be working on until everything gets done. So that is my goal. Also Advent knitting. Also maybe knitting a little bit on Snowberry every now and again just to keep that moving forward. Um, but mainly Christmas knitting. Thankfully it's mindless so I can read a lot. I hope to finish my Jane Seymour book and move forward with that and read other books. Um, I have other books that are coming and should be read because I'm very excited about them. Also Christmas books because it's always a good time to read Christmas book is, books is the, the holiday season. It's just always good. Thank you so much for watching this episode. That is all that I have for you guys this week and I guess I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Bye.